Hey guys, I'm going to go over some of the changes I made to SVG backgrounds and kind of talk a little bit about how I did it. So first, let's go to the website. I added a bunch of halftone and fade backgrounds. Um, originally only had these top four and I rounded out the collection with 10 new ones. Um, so some cool stuff. Let's just kind of preview some of these. So halftone can be tricky because it can be a lot of code to put every single dot. So I'm going to show you my little trick to get past that. Um, but let's just show you some of these. Very cool. This one's called Comical Halftone. Reminds me of comics. Fun stuff. Rotating. And then these different shapes, star, this X pattern that also can kind of be a diamond. And then these fades. Okay, so let's look at one of these. Slanted halftone. So I pulled up the code and I'm going to kind of break down my trick of making this pretty optimized. Um, if you did this in Illustrator and exported it, it would be a huge file. So I, I uh, reach for one trick in particular, and let's break that out. So first, let's open up VS Code. Here I am. So making this shape isn't too bad to do in code. And I usually start out in Illustrator and then bring some kind of template over to my code editor. Um, but once you get it in there, you can start really playing around with it and changing numbers. So here we have a circle and they were all like spaced apart, like maybe 20 or 40 pixels. Um, and then when we start looking at the code, you can actually see that they are spaced out 20 pixels right now. And then they go from um, one pixel. So this is half of a pixel in radius. Actually, they're unitless. They don't have pixels, but I say pixel because I'm pretty much working in that often digitally, but they're unitless. Anyway, so half a unitless coordinate. <laughs> oh, sure. All right, let's go with pixels. So we got them increasing in size. So it goes from half, one, um, one and a half, two, two and a half. So they're increasing by a pixel. So this would this would make a circle of one pixel two pixels, three pixels, four pixels. They double because the radius is half of a circle. So it gets increasingly big and sized. And obviously I have to shift over the X value or X coordinate to get them to move over. And you'll see that again. Um, the first one has no X coordinate. So it defaults to zero. Then it's 20 more and then 20 more and then 20 more increase in 20. And so all the way up to this last one. Let's just comment that out so you can see that one disappearing and blinking right now because I comment it in and out. And then we have this little trick, which goes all the way to the end. We'll break that out when things are a little bit more obvious what's going on. So I put this all in one group and that's because now I can style this, all these circles easily. Um, class doesn't matter. That's for the back end, how I manage um, making things uh, customizable on svgbackgrounds.com. So we can apply a fill. These would default to black, but I make them white so you can see them. And that's really all I'm doing here. Um, you'll notice that everything is in a defs tag or definitions. And so anything I put in here doesn't actually show up on the canvas. I have to reference it elsewhere. And so we'll get to that. Um, so then, so this is, has an idea of A, so I need to reference that. And I do it here um, using a use element. Um, and I give it an X coordinate of 40. Let's see what happens here. So I'm going to start uncommenting things. And you'll notice that I Uh, you notice that I um, 
change the x value and the y value. So they kind of have this little slant to it. So they're not perfectly aligned. If they all had the same y, they'd be stacked on top of each other. All right, so there's one group of these, and I gave it an ID of B. So I'm going to reference it again. So if you kind of catch on what I'm doing here, um, all there's like 20 circles in here, and I reference it with one of these, and all of a sudden that reduces code, right? Um, I with this line of code, I'm adding this whole line of circles. Now I'm doing this again, and um, let's do this one. So I just added not only 20 circles, but this time it's like five uh, references to those 20 circles. So with one line of code, I'm adding like 100 circles. And keep, so there's a lot of these. So now I just added one, two, three, there's like six of these, so 600 circles with five lines of code. So we're kind of embedding um, groups and then reference it with use, but making groups out of those. It's kind of an easy way to clone bigger shapes. Like you clone a group of a group of a group, and all of a sudden you can do a lot of um, heavy lifting with code with like a small amount of code. And then that's all that's in the devs tag. And then let's just take this out real quickly. And so this is one path. And you'll notice it goes all the way to the end. Um, so I'm pretty much, and it has like a horizontal of 999.99. So it's just, it just goes on for a long time. And I could be a little bit more precise about it. But when th you'll notice that this design actually spins around when we get to it. Um, so it's really good to make sure that it goes for quite a bit. I don't need that big of a number, but it's where I ended up. I think I was going to have four digits anyway, so that's that. All right, now we're getting to the trick. So now we're out of the defs tag, the definition tag, and we have one final group here. Um, I'm only referencing it once right now, um, right? This last one was had an ID of C. We referenced it here. Um, we're giving some translates now to what's going on there. Um, so if I didn't have that, 600, 0, this is where it would be. And same thing with this. I'm translating this whole group, moving it. And this helps me put it in the center. Um, why did I choose 750, 500? If I scroll up all the way to the top, um, you'll notice the view box is double that. So that's the center. I'm, I, so everything starts at like, I'm designing from zero, zero. And by moving it at the 50% of the width of the view box and 50% of the height, um, it just makes the coordinate system start at um, the middle instead of zero, zero. All right. Next, let's start uncommenting some more of these. So this one looks like it's close by. And now I just, with one line of code, was it 600? Yeah, something like that. So one line of code, 600 circles, and they're nicely placed. So you can see the power of um, cloning clones a few times. Now, these won't actually show up. And... The reason why is because I make this um, rotatable. So right now it's at this angle. If I make it 15, it starts sliding. And you see that the um, background is showing now. So this is where the boundary of the view box is. And this is kind of clipping. So if I uncomment these back out, there's one here too. Um, we just added that. Comment this one in. Now it's showing. So as long as it keeps going beyond the bounds and then when you rotate it, it's kind of uh, missing. Well, that's how I fill it in. So now this can be completely rotatable, 30. And so in the 
user interface on SVG backgrounds, you have like a slider and can change this really quickly. Actually, let's jump into that. Let me pull up Chrome here. So here we are on this one. Let me go with the black background so it's a little bit more visible. Um, generally, I don't use backgrounds like this. I like it more subtle like I had it, but this is just to make it visually obvious what's going on. So as we rotate that, this is what's happening. And so that's why it's important so when it goes like over here that this little bit of code was missing uh, or no like circles were in this zone. So it looked like it was getting clipped. So that's why I had to uh, clone it two extra times. Um, yeah, that's so that's the basically the trick on how I make some of these more intricate designs where there's so many elements, but the code is quite reduced. Um, looking at the file size, it's three kilobytes, which is absurd. Like if you put this in the background and compare it to any type of image, um, you're going to get close. You're going to get like half or a third of a megabyte um, or just like for the average full screen image that I use, I heavily optimize it. So if I go to like pexelist.com, get a really attractive image, optimize the hell out of it. I'm lucky if it's around 300 kilobytes. So this is like a hundred times smaller than that. So that's why it's really powerful to use SVG. Um, and so this is my trick to get some of these more intricate designs. Hope you enjoyed. I'm Matt Vizywig. Catch you next time.